Hello everyone, Chef Rick here and welcome or welcome back to the YouTube channel for yet another amazing recipe. And today we're going to be making this absolutely delicious homemade mahamri with some coconut mbazi and it will whip up super quickly and absolutely anyone can make it. Do not fear because most people fear this before they even get started. Just give it a go, see how it turns out and as you keep trying this recipe or as you keep going, you learn a few extra things and you will get better with time. So first ingredient we're going to need is fresh cardamom. Fresh cardamom helps them rise really well and avoids them from soaking up a lot of oil and of course provides some nice flavor. So take your pods, open them up and then add them to a small spice grinder. And you want to blend it together not until it's fully ground but just until it's almost fully ground. There should be a little bit of larger chunks and smaller chunks. That's exactly how we want it. So once that is set aside, we're gonna start to heat up some vegetable oil. So in a large pan, you wanna add in some vegetable oil and just let that get hot. And we're going to add these to our dry ingredients. So I'm gonna add in some all-purpose flour into a large mixing bowl. Here I'm measuring with cups, so I did about five to six cups of all-purpose flour. And you need to gauge the all-purpose flour based on how many people you work you're cooking for, and cook a lot more than you need because even if the mom is a stay, um, you once you make my for breakfast the next meal people are going to have is dinner so really make more than enough just in case someone's feeling hungry throughout the day they can have mahamri here and that so add in your fresh cardamom along with some sugar and give that a really good mix the levels of sugar are entirely up to you but in the description box below i'll give you a recommended amount along with a gauge for everything else Add in your hot vegetable oil and just give that a really good mix and the whole point of adding vegetable oil is so that we can add a bit of oil into this so that when we need we don't over need and end up getting some really tough mahambris. So you want to gently rub it in with your hands and if you clamp it together in your hand and it forms some very small chunks it is not yet done so you need to add a little bit more oil and continue to rub that in so that when you take your all purpose flour and you want to put it through your hands once you clamp it up it forms one large cube or one large big ball but which you can obviously separate so that's basically the gauge of how you can do it and since the oil is hot you want to be very careful going with a spoon first and then eventually going with your fingers so once you form some nice chunks you know wanna that's done completely it is now ready for all the other ingredients next we're gonna add in an illegal amount of yeast and when i say that i mean an illegal amount of yeast i went with about five four to five tablespoons yes four to five tablespoons it is a lot but it is the best one for it so uh once you've added in your yeast and it's fully incorporated you now want to start to add in some warm water just not too cold not too warm and you want to gently bring that together adding your water just until a dough fully forms together and we do not want to need this at it fully fully just add water until the dough is just slightly sticky and has come together to form one beautiful mass and once that it's just formed together into one even dough you also now just you don't even need to apply oil to the sides of the bowl it will not stick due to the oil that's already in the dough itself you want to cover it and just let it sit for about half an hour or while you do all the other things you need to do in the meantime which is to make our coconut mbazi cover and just let that sit so in the meantime we can start to do our mbazi so you want to start by adding in your f uh, almost fully unproven pigeon peas or mbazi whichever you call them make sure they are pre-boiled but not too overcooked add in your thinly sliced onions along with some hoho and some coconut milk now um here i'm using pre-made coconut milk uh we had made it a couple days before and just kept it in the freezer and the fridge and that's basically it. if you guys would like to know how i make it i do have a recipe that i'll leave in the description box down below but if you would like an in-depth full tutorial on how i make it i would be glad to share it add some pili pili and some salt pili pili is crucial for bazi or any cereal that you're making so once your dough is nice and risen and it's nice and puffy you want to just gently take it out onto a large flat surface and you want to gently press out all of the gas or all of the air that is inside your mamri because obviously it has risen and you want to form it into a large log which is nice and long and even and from there we are going to separate it into the different parts at this stage you'll be able to easily gaze, gauge how much mamri you're going to make because you need to cut them into almost even size pieces just um almost two centimeters they should be around two centimeters thick 
that's the best gauge and for each um slice that you're going to make it will give you about four mahambris because we are going to form this into balls and just let them sit for a little bit longer so uh slice them up until you have some nice and even pieces make sure they are extremely even so that you don't have it extremely some are big some are small that's not what you want so you want to take your first piece and then you want to tuck the edges underneath it so that you can form a nice ball and then run it to your fingers and in between your palms just to make a rounded edge at the bottom once it's done just set that aside i'll show it to you again but now on the surface so uh, dip it in a little bit of flour so that it is not extremely sticky and then you want to press out all of the air from the center pull in your edges towards the middle this is basically how you form a ball pulling the edges towards the center of the dough from each side until it forms a rough ish ball and then you want to turn it over and you want to just pass it in between your palms and make sure the surface you're working on is unflowered so that it can stick together and form a nice and round ball turn it round and round and round and round until it is nice and even it makes a nice and even ball shape so um set that aside and then you want to just cover these up and just let them um rest just for a little bit so to a large frying dish you want to add in some vegetable oil and then we want to just let that get hot now keyword here you need to make sure there is absolutely no air in these so you want to gently press them out until you have knocked out all of the gas that might have formed while you are heating up the oil and then you want to roll it out until you have formed it to not too thin not too thick <laughs> oh god this instruction is not going to help you but it needs to be at a point where it looks like um almost like a ruler like a ruler sized thickness a ruler sized thickness that's usually the best size for this and once it is nice and rolled out you wanna just cut it down the middle and then split your halves into quarters and that's how you make mahambri super easy and you could do any shapes that you'd like but obviously the triangle it is standard and it is recommended for this recipe so you want to just take them and then when i head on over to the fryer if we will be be mindful that if they're too thick they will be very big and they won't rise as much unless your oil is hot enough but then if they're too thin they'll just become very crisp mahamis and you do not want that so you want to fry them at least two at a time and do keep in mind the moment they hit the oil they will start to rise but if they need a bit of help you want to splash a bit of oil over the top of these and also another thing is for every batch of three because that's what my fryer can fit one will not turn out as pretty so just prepare yourself mentally for that they will not all be as perfect as I, you know they won't be all as perfect so you do need to prepare yourself for that one that will not be as puffy or as instagram um aesthetic for compared to the rest take them out of your oil and then you want to just let them drain over a nini a large frying large colander just get that excess oil out then you want to fry up the rest of your mahambris depending on how big your fryer is you want to go in with three mine fits three and do not overcrowd the pan if you overcrowd the pan they will not all rise as evenly as possible so do not overcrowd so once you're all done frying up this recipe made about almost 50 and you think see if you're like oh my god 50 is so much 50 is so kidogo because i live in a household where one person will eat 10 another person will eat seven another person will eat five so really make more than you need because even on because i made this on friday on saturday you can have some but they are best suited for sunday so um so to your bahazi once it's nice and cooked up you want to add in your first maji like the thicker version of the cream of the coconut and just give that a really good mix and that's basically it serve with your mahamri and enjoy i really hope you guys give this recipe a try and if you do it is fairly simple just do not tell yourself you cannot do it that's all my dad will say i'll leave the recipe or guide in the description box below and yeah make sure you like subscribe and turn on notifications for more amazing content every single monday